Time for some shopping, Falco? Maybe later. Now, when you find people who spoke to the king. He's been known to pass through less all. Falls on occasion, so if we're lucky. Oh, hey. Hey, Monsieurs, it's a uh, us, remember? Remember? Are you keeping well, madame? Absolutely. Never been better. So, what can I sell you today? Information. We're looking for positive stories about the king. I don't suppose that you have any. The king? No, I haven't got nothing to say about the king. King's a... Uh, uh, smelly egg beef! Why, a child? You know what they say about the king having spies everywhere? Spies? Calm down, Sparrowson. The rumors of the king having an elaborate spy network are patently untrue. But how do you explain the shutdown banquet, huh? Governments clamp it down on anyone who dissent, you know? Let's get this conversation back on track. Joey, can you tell us why the king's a smelly egg thief? My name's not Joey. It's nothing you need to concern yourselves with, messieurs. Please go on, madame. Don't worry, we aren't spies. At least, I don't think we are. I know, I trust you guys. See, a couple of years ago, we were running a shop. An antiques and all and then shop. And, and, we had an egg. It was the skull and egg, super precious. We must have bought that thing for 200 francs, but it was easily worth 10 times that. We were planning on making a nice tidy, tidy sum from it. I see, an investment egg. So what happened? Well, one day, we were visited by the king, no less. And old King Lufil shows an interest in our egg. So we were thinking this would be our chance to make bank, right? But then the geezer just goes and waddles off with it. Without paying you? Oh yeah, he paid us all right. What's this? The coin one of the king's guards flipped our way. It was... it isn't even French. Britain, but... Oh, Britannia. I think that's British. One of those crazy imperial unit coins from a crazy imperial country! I have no idea what the British-French exchange rate is, but can we buy this off you, madam? Put your wallet away and keep it. It's worthless to me. Sautan's coin has been added to your evidence. Those of that egg bankrupted us, put us out on the streets. And now we've bounced back. So Tani and Gambare, better than ever. That's excellent to hear. Anyway, we must take our leave. You've been a huge help, madame. We're gonna kick that king's butt and get your egg back! Hold on, we're supposed to be the Fets. Yeah, that wasn't the smartest of use but there, Sparrows in. Alright, just the Pont des Arts. Monsieur Kingly, we need your help. Finally, it's about time someone around here appreciate my skills. Your fishing skills, right? Term is angling, wise guy. This has nothing to do with fishing. Let me cut to the preamble. We're looking for people who have positive stories about the king. Would you happen to have any? Stories, huh? Came to the right guy. I have a whale of a story for you. So, the other day, I was fishing, I caught this monster of a catfish. It was two meters long, easily. Here we go! I caught a fish that was this big! Oh, sure. I try a 90 kilogram falco now in the water, and everyone buys it. By claiming to catch one big fish, suddenly everyone's a skeptic. Please continue your story, Monjur Kingly. Oh, right, so anyway, the king of all people happens to be walking by with his entourage. And they all clapped and cheered and came over to see the fish. And then the king says, I'm hungry, let's... I'm hungry, let's get this fiddle up. And he just walks off my fish, can you believe that? After the egg thief story, yeah. I can believe that. Seems like something a royal pig would do. Did you at least get paid for your fish? Oh yes, one of the royal guards nice enough to flip one franc my way. 
One front! May as well just flip the bird. No offense. Aha! So the cake supports the local fishing industry. I'm writing this down. I have no idea the story will be of any use to us. We appreciate your time, Munger. Good day to you. Bye, Munger Fisherman! Hey, don't call me a fisherman! Seriously, the king's just a goddamn thief. What's the plan for today? You think the love right? Check out this hall, maybe? We already did both of those. Actually, I was thinking. Severin, how rude. Don't they teach you to not? No time for bickering, JJ. It's time. Time for what? The trial, you dunce. Already? A large protest started to form at the Place de la Concorde. No doubt it'll turn to an unruly mob before long. The spirit of revolution is in the air. We must act now. I'm going to start the necessary preparations at the courthouse. So I need you to get the king from the Palais Royal. You want me to drag the king to the courthouse? Not even sure that I could drag him from his chair. Use diplomacy, you dolt. I'm sure you'll think of something. Right, come along, Spiralson. We have a king to defend. Alright. Palais Royal. No longer just a royal estate, Palais Royal has become a functional Bourgeois meeting spot. Falcon and Spiralson rush across the city. Scores of angry eyes watch the pair's every movement. Kakariko is right. The spear of revolution is in the air. Outside the Palais Royal. Palais Royal. Yeah, sure, Palais Royal. It's fine. Crowds have started to form. The Royal Guards watch in nervous anticipation. 3,600 and... Save it. We're number one. You again? Shouldn't you be in jail? Stop time for that nonsense. Your Majesty, we need you to come with us. What? Oh boy, there's a sail on fish on this hall, is... Honestly, he's so full of himself. I had a sail on fish on this hall, is... I had a death the game of sails, that's a bull tactic. Thank you, Munchir, but I have a fish that I can eat this week. The nice cake fish generally is gifted me enormous catfish. Be the same stuff. Suppose we'll try something else. There's a trial. Well, why didn't you say so? I love trials. Ooh, ah. Uh, I need to give a testimony? Please say it so. As a matter of fact, Your Majesty, yes. I think you will need to give a testimony. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Here we go. Did anyone spot us? I don't think so. It's still early. Crowds are only just starting to form. With any luck, we can get this trial over with before anyone realizes what's going on. Yo! Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Uh Yo, treasonous scumbags! You actually captured the king! Captured? Clearly a joke, your majesty! A fairly subtle. Well, I'm lucky it! So it's true, you intend to hold a trial! Your actions are only this. Despicable. You are all on the same level as the filthy rebel dissenters. Do you intend to stop us, Inspector? On any other day, I would. You are a lot of lawbreakers throw and throw. I want nothing more to see you try to punish for your trade stances. But I owe a debt to you, Falcone, and to Monsieur Cockerico. So you'll let us pass? I have ordered for a dozen National Guards to set perimeter around the entrance of the Palais de Justice. The rebels will inevitably catch word that the king is here, 
They all try to storm the building. When they do, we all be ready to hold them off. That's amazing. Thank you, Inspector. Go on, before I change my mind. Alright, settle down everyone, settle down. Who oh, should I be standing here, man the reckless? Where you are is perfect, your majesty. Now, is everyone here? JJ Falcon, present. The defense is ready, your honor. Severin Kakariko, present. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Oh, this will be good! I wonder who's on trial. Are the jury all here? Now, present and account for your honor. Everything seems to be in order. The court is now in session for the trial of King Louis Philippe. Oh, that's me. Wait, what? Calm down, your majesty. Firstly, we're simply prosecuting you for a short list of 32 crimes against the French people. What is this madness? Did you set me up to this? Well, yes and no. We're your defense, your majesty. I'm so confused. The process is... The process is simple. I'll state a charge that has been leveled at you and present my evidence for the charge. You and your defense will then have the opportunity to present their own counter-evidence. I'm even more confused. Just let us do the talking, your majesty. We're doing this for your own good. Why'd you... We want you to end up like old Louis the Sixteenth now, which we? Let us proceed. Prosecution. Present for the first charge. Oh, present for the first charge. King Louis Felipe, you are being charged with neglecting the lower classes of the nation. Your continued support of Guizot's outdated policies have resulted in an ever-growing wage gap. Poverty is rampant. Animals are forced to turn to begging, thievery, and burglary just to survive. How do you justify this vile latitude? Goodness! You're going straight for the jugular, aren't you? Ah, uh, I'm a good person. I don't hate poor people. I feel mild contempt for them, certainly, but don't we all? Please allow me to do the talking, your majesty. Severin, the king is far kinder to poor people than the general populace has been led to believe. I would even describe him as a generous philanthropist. Who, who would describe him as a generous philanthropist? Some would. You're gonna have to do better than that. Show me an example. Just one example of the king being generous to a poor person. Yeah. Renard's story. Oh, I'd like to present this story. It's the account of a person who was a sick and starving beggar. One day, this beggar was approached by the king. Did the king offer the beggar money? No, he offered something far better. He offered the beggar financial advice. It's true, I did do that. Where is that beggar now? He runs a successful business that can pull 40 frogs from a single client transaction. Amazing! The ex-beggar attributes the king for his radical transformation? Well, he didn't say so directly, but it was implied. Interesting! Would you mind telling us the name of this person? Oh boy... I think we have to. He's a man named Renard Volpes. Oh, Renard Volpes, the trickster in Connors who runs that deplorable private investigative service? You're familiar with him? Of course, the fox has been meddling at trials and disturbing investigations for years. This is the caliber of the person that's produced boosted by the king's financial advice that we should all be deeply concerned. Oh dear!
Inside the Palais Royal, pro protesters charged building skates, effortlessly overcoming the royal guards. Looters take the opportunity to overrun and ransack the building. Great. Where on earth is that cursed king? Piero! No sign of him, ma'am! Rumors that he's gone flat the building. Sam Squizo. The Prime Minister and the King both fled before we even started. Salt? How is that even possible? But a boom I thought someone may be of use. Out oh here. A royal guard? Nice find, Fontaine. Speak, duck. Tell us where the king is. Ah, you think me a common turncoat. I will have you know that I am a m the mighty officer back. I would sooner die than betray my country. Okay. The Palais de Justice. A couple of lawyers came and took it to the Palais de Justice. That was easy. Piero, Fontaine, gather the crowd. We're marching on the Palais de Justice. What are we up to? Charge 12? Please go to your prosecutor. Very well. King Louis Felipe, you stand accused of crushing small businesses in favor of supporting wealthier industry giants. Such a nepotic attitude only serves to discourage people from forming their own enterprises. I disagree. As a self-made businessman, the king has constantly shown support for all businesses, big and small. Another ludicrous assertion from the defense. Prove me wrong, JJ. When has the king ever shown support for a grassroots business? Uh... Ooh. Yeah, let's say fishing. I would like to present this story as the count of a fisherman. Angler! Sorry, angler, who recently caught an enormous catfish from the sea. Some say the fish was as large as two meters. Upon catching the fish, the king congratulated the man and offered him compensation for his efforts. Compensation for his efforts? You mean he bought the fish? In so many words, yes. Well, putting aside how weak an example that is of a man supporting local businesses, I see a much more pressing issue. There's no way that a fisherman caught a two-meter catfish from the sea. Well, be I killer bait, like, say, a box of high-end chocolates. Ludicrous! Nobody would be stupid enough to use chocolates as fishing bait. Guys, can't be serious. Inside the doors of the Tribuno de Grande, Inspector Valerity watches the ever-growing crowd of protesters. The National Guard poised their bayonets, keeping the angry mob at bay. Disgusting rabble! A lot of them! Oh, looks like the guards are like someone through! An emissary of the rebels, or perhaps one who considers themselves a leader! Are you the officer in charge of this barricade? I am. I came to talk to you directly. I feel you could settle this maturely. No violence, no casualties. Wouldn't that be marvelous? We only have one demand. That is, you stand aside and let me escort the king out of the building. Grant me that, and I will order the crowd to disperse. I don't know if this is your first revolution, mademoiselle, but certainly isn't mine. If your protesters want the king, they'll have to get past the line of National Guards. And I don't think your people have the scale, equipment, or raw numbers to accomplish such a feat. Just tell her the king is on trial. I believe we're up to the last charge, are we not? 
correct. Charge 32. King Louis Felipe, you are accused of being an imbecile. You are mentally unfit to run this country. No need to get personal. It is a crime to be an idiot, Severin. Thankfully, but were we would all be doing a hard time right now. Illegal, no, but it does raise the question of why we are giving an idiot so much power. Let's not follow the example of Great Britain, who let the Mad King, George III, rule for decades past his prime. King Louis Philippe is neither mad nor stupid. He is an intelligent and competent individual. I'll have you know that I'm only competent on prune days. Your Majesty, please. Chose an impossible battle, JJ. The King's idiocy is widely accepted. I heard you to prove me wrong. Show me one true evidence. King's not a blithering idiot. I would like to present this account given by a local librarian. He asserts that the King is something of an avid reader. Picture books don't count, JJ. Oh, I had no idea that expansive history of the Macedonian Empire was a picture book. The king has been known to check out as many as a dozen thick books in a single day, covering a whole range of subjects. Face the facts, Severin, the king is an educated man. Hmm, perhaps a test is in order. That won't be necessary. What was the name of that book you mentioned? The Expansive History of the Macedonian Empire? Tell me, your majesty, where is Macedonia? Where? Yes, yeah, I'll even make it easy. Just tell us the name of the continent. What continent is Macedonian? You can do this, ma your majesty. It's a 1 in 7 shot! Can you really do it? I want to say Africa! I've got it! London! Oh, Mandu. I think we're done here, Your Honor. As I have demonstrated in excruciating detail, the King is incompetent, lazy, stupid, and occasionally malicious. He isn't fit to run a bakery, let alone a nation. Very well, Prosecutor. Does the defense have anything to add? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I've got nothing. I've defended this man to the best of my abilities, and I have nothing more to say. Very good. Nah, then I shall now converse with the jury, which will determine price precisely which crimes the king is guilty of and decide on appropriate punishment. Punishment? Well, your man, you have to do something of skin. Calm down, Your Majesty. The whole purpose of this trial is to see that your punishment is fair and fitting. You're not going to end up with your head on a spike. At least, I don't think you will. That Mademoiselle is returning. How naive. Negotiate it over, Mademoiselle. Once again, I ask that you let me pass. Let me extract the king without issue, and then we shall be on our way. I warn you, the protesters are getting rowdy. Any moment now, they might charge on their own accord. Your commitment to pacifism is admirable, but you're brimming with naivety, mademoiselle. Be on your way. Tis, tis, I warned you that your, I warned you that your methods are too passive, madame. That foul voice. Show yourself, wolf. You. You are the fire gave me. Tip off about the croc monsieur. Was my information no good, Inspector? That's say how and when you could reach the croc monsieur. You are my mere few details. Your words almost killed a few acquaintances of mine. Well, Inspector, it seems that you and I agree on something. This wolf has a forked tongue. There's no need to direct your hatred at me, but I am. Came here to give you a gift, a peace offering. You have nothing to offer. I most certainly do. Did you know that Tom's a sleeping city winds straight under the Palais de Justice? It's true. If one were to put enough gunpowder in the right spot, one could even take an entire side of the building down. 
What are you prowling on about? How much gunpowder do you think it would take, madame? 50 kilograms, 100? Mm -hmm. Maybe even 200 kilograms, just to be safe. Friar, tell me you didn't. The fuse is lit. 20 seconds, the pillars of the Palais de Justice will fall like the Temple of Dagon. Ryan will do you no good, you brother killing pute. You are bluffing. There will be no explosion. You would like that to be the case, wouldn't you, Inspector? But unfortunately for you, the Brady Killer emerges one last time. Yo! I must congratulate you, JJ. No, Falcon. You argued excellently. I'm as unsure of the Pagan's fate as you are. One thing is for certain. You could not have done your job any better. Thank you, Kokoriko. After a small amount of deliberation, we have come to a decision. We find the offended King Louis Felipe to be... Ah, dude, what was that? The explosion! Sound like came from right outside! Uh, I uh, hate to be a mayor of bad news, but uh, well, I'm um, in the mayor speak uh, of how to put this... Face... Hey, say, spit it out, Monsieur. Rebels, it's the rebels. There's a big explosion at the entrance. Rebels are pouring into the building as we speak. You are the rabbit. Everybody clear out. Your Honor, quickly, what was the verdict? Really? At a time like this? There's no better time. Exile, now get out of here. Court is adjourned. A valiant effort, Falcon, but we're out of both time and options. The rebels want the king so badly they can take him. You can say that. The Rosers got a point, Falco. Let's just turn the key over to Lemon for Steven's dues. We thought we can. No. You two give up far too easily. Sparrowson, Cockerigo, we're escorting the king to R&M Associates. Renard's place, what can he do? If anyone has the power to make the king disappear, it would be that conniving fox. Yeah, yeah, that might just work. Come along, your majesty. Oh dear, oh dear. Come on, Cockerigo, no time to dawdle. I'm sting. Will there be any chance for your ridiculous plan succeeding? Someone must stay behind to delay the rebels. Cockery, go. Go, I got this. Good luck. That damn wolf nearly killed the lot of us. You? You're the one harboring the king? It's a pleasure to s It's a pleasure to see you again too, madame. Don't get snarky, where is he? You're too late. The king has long left the building. Well, I know he could be halfway to Guadalupe by now. So he's already gone. Damn, there goes my opportunity to enact justice. Enact justice? You should have seen the trial, madame. Everything was official, professional, and logical. That was the most brilliant display of justice I have ever seen. But the king is in the process of receiving a fitting punishment. Kakariko, did did my father receive a fitting punishment when you were the prosecutor at his trial ten years ago? No, madame. But every day since then, I've strived towards justice. I shall continue to do so for the rest of my days. See that you do. Do hurry up, your majesty. Ugh. <sighs> Ugh. <sighs> This is taking forever! You aren't going any farther! That friar! I'm not gonna let you take another step towards the king. I didn't come here for the king, I came to kill you, JJ Falcone! Very well, Sparrowson, take the king and hurry to Renard's. I'll handle this monster. Are you sure you'll be okay? I can handle one crippled wolf. Okay, come on, your majesty! Ugh! That exploded at the courthouse. That wasn't just the rebels, was it? Heh, <laughs> of course not. That was to take out the murderous pute who killed my brother. Madame Bimort. Said she was, she was the madam who pulled the trigger. Those were your words that sentenced him. I would do it again. You and your brother are heinous individuals. Cause what you like, it doesn't matter anymore. Your blood must pay for this. An eye for an eye. That's the way the judges of old. You don't appear armed. I don't need a gun or sword to kill you. 
their 100 kilograms of gunpowder beneath our very feet. One more step to the entire area go. Vile scum! Spectre, just in time. You look a little singed. Did you hear that explosion, Munger Vulpus? I did. Seems the rumors are true, Mousy. The revolution's full swing. Go on, get in there! Visitors, Munger Vulpus! Visitors! I wonder who. Oh my, King Louis Felipe. Good afternoon, Your Majesty. <laughs> are you a Munger Vulpus? I am, this is my companion, Mousy. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Your Majesty. I must admit, I rarely have a gentleman of your caliber in this office. Please have a seat. Mousy fetched His Majesty some tea. Right away! I hear you can make people disappear. Ah, uh, yes, a new identity, a new face. Indeed, I can make that happen. Of course, there is a price. How much? Normally, such service costs 100 francs, but for you, your majesty, 10,000. 10,000 francs? I don't carry that sort of money on my person. I'm sure you can find a way. Ground your head had an egg? Yeah, ground your head and egg your hand would surely be enough to pay for this exquisite service. <laughs> you are a crook, Munger of Ops. Now, now, let's not call each other names. Both grown men. Now, let's see on the other skies. Ah, here we go. Go put this on. How do I look? Hmm. Mousy, could you come in here for a moment, please? What is it, my dear folks? Oh, who's this cockatoo? Where did King Louis Felipe go? You see, your majesty. It's... Is that convincing? Of course, but I have to give you a new name and identity match your new look. We need a name that is original, yet ordinary. Subtle, yet exquisite. John Smith? Brilliant, Mousy. Manja, your name is now John Smith. You are an outstanding English gentleman. J- Jim of John Smith. Hmm, that's so good. We'll have to work on your English accent. Be after me. My name is John Smith. My name is... Jim Smith. Wow, did you grow up in London, Your Majesty? Your accent is impeccable. R really? Tell him, Mousy. I didn't understand any of it, so it must be perfect English. The sky's name, accent, I think we're all set. You ready, Mr. Smith? I don't think so. Of course you're ready. Flee, Manja, flee. Take a horse to Calais, and from there, hire a boat. Take you to the shores of England. You think you'll make it to England, my dear folks? That scared Mousy, I think our clown will be lucky to make it down the street. Come on, let's return this egg to Satani. Well, there we go. Come on, Berry Brain! Time's a wasting! Well, 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 look at fire inside to get up. Give me a break, my legs are killing me from running all over Paris. Besides, we just had a case, had the case of a century. I think we're allowed one day to relax. Let's place me some Jack Was Noir. Nah, look at this stack of mail we have to reply to. Mail? Inspector Valerius asked us to sign off on some paperwork regarding the death of Rary Remus. Regal wants us to arrange a lunch meeting to discuss potential future collaborative projects. And Mad But More has asked us to help establish a constitution for the Second Republic. You can believe that! Plus, we have, like, a dozen requests for legal work from other citizens of Paris. I guess we're just going uh, around by our involvement in the King's trial, huh? Mon do. So much to do. Well, I want this to take a holiday. Hey, Falcone! Do you think we're about to see some changes? Changes? The old king is gone. The prime minister has resigned. The Second Republic is kicking off. I'm just saying. You think this could be the start of a new era of peace for Paris? 
I think uh, it just might be Sparrowson. Don't get me wrong, but certainly not this isn't the last remote Paris we'll ever see. Not by a long shot. But maybe, for now, we can have a brief moment of harmony. A moment of harmony! That sounds nice! But enough talk about politics, Sparrowson. Let's go pick up some breakfast. Sounds good! I feel like pains on chocolate! What? Chocolate pains is what I'm getting from that? Because I don't know French. Unfortunately, the lion still... is still convicted. Well, there we go! This was... Aviary Attorney! Honestly, I kind of enjoyed this. This was a fun, fun game. Sure, I ended up voice acting more than putting in my own commentary. So... Probably would have been nice to have like a second person with me to like... Properly talk about what's going on. Yeah. I'm surprised we didn't defend the lion. There you go, Finn. Why didn't you just fully right out finish? You've reached the end of Route B. Egalite. I don't understand that. The ending you received is determined by the decisions you made in Chapter 3. Try tackling a trial in the catacombs differently in order to see a different ending. Thank you for playing Aviary Attorney. Oh, so it's completely based on the trial. Okay. And you know what? I think I'm satisfied with my ending. Next time, be a... New game that uh, that has has that's probably more puzzle based than this. See you guys then. Goodbye.